Today is Sunday, May 20th, 2018. I'm wearing my LA Dodger shirt. And we are driving Sunday morning past hundreds of churches to go eat breakfast. And we will drive past these same hundreds of churches and go home. We are not dressed up. We are not going to a church. And yet, we know more about the Bible, more about God, and have Christ living in us than probably all these people who are going to church today in this area. And that, what that shows you then is that God is not in a building. Paul told the Corinthians, Ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost. God doesn't dwell in a building. He dwells in us. If you've trusted in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for your sins, you have eternal life. God has given you the mind of Christ. He's given you the Holy Ghost. And we are to present our bodies a living sacrifice to God, holy and acceptable unto Him, which is your reasonable service. We're told in Galatians 2.20 that Christ liveth in me. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. God dwells in people. It's a wonderful thing that happened today um, that didn't happen before. We were talking before about how when you talk about, well, God's not in a church building, he's in us, so you don't have to go to a church building. I've got almost a thousand YouTube subscribers out there. They don't go to a church building. They know more about scripture. They have Christ living in them more than the people who go to churches. And they're just driving down the road listening to these videos or they're at home watching the videos. And they're being edified. They're coming to the knowledge of the truth. And as they get that sound doctrine built up in their inner man, then they're strengthened with might, and then Christ lives in them more. Whereas people who go into churches, they claim to be representing God. They wouldn't dare wear an L.A. Dodger shirt on Sunday morning. Not that they're not fans, but it's just it's sacrilegious. How dare you walk into a church building and not have that, you know, have something um, like that. you got to dress up, dressed appropriately. We even talked to somebody yesterday who was a who is a Christian, and he wore a shirt that says, Jesus loved the hell out of you, wore it to church. They kicked him out of the church. That's pretty good sound doctrine, Jesus loved the hell out of you. Because Romans 5, 8 says, God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Well, if we were still sinners, then the wages of sin is death, according to Romans 6, 23. That means I'm gonna suffer death, eternal damnation, in the lake of fire. But then Jesus loved me in that he died for me, and so now I no longer have to suffer eternal damnation in the lake of fire. That's pretty good sound doctrine, but yet sound doctrine was kicked out of the church because that didn't fit with what the church wanted. But yet I could sit here, not dress up, not be a choke by a noose around my neck it's called a tie, and not go to a church building, and not give anybody any money. And same thing for you. You can sit there in your pajamas and if you at home if you want or you can be dressed up however you want doesn't matter you don't have to give any money to anybody you don't have to put on airs you don't have to look like you're more important than anybody else you don't tell anybody you go to church and yet Christ is living in you more than someone else who does all those things it's because they're, all they're doing is they're making a fair show in the flesh let me read you a scripture because that problem has been that's been a problem ever since man's sin. In Matthew chapter 24, just before Jesus died, they'd been into the temple and they come outside. It says in Matthew 24 verse 1, and Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. See, that's what people do today. They have their they have their um, steeples. They have their stained glass buildings. A lot of people go to church because it's such a beautiful building. They say, oh, look at the stained glass. It's so beautiful. 
It sure does honor God by these beautiful buildings. You see that today, and that's what was happening in Matthew 24, verse 1. They departed from the temple, and the disciples were in awe about these buildings of the temple. They said, look at this, Jesus. you got to understand, the disciples, they don't go to Jerusalem that often. They're required by the Mosaic Law to appear three times in the, t in the temple there in Jerusalem. And so they only went there three times a year. And they only did it probably for those three years um, that Jesus was ministering with them. I don't know, but at least we know that it, they did it for those three years. Probably didn't do it before then. They were poor people, fishermen, tax collectors. They didn't have much money. And they lived in Galilee, which according to Matthew chapter 4 was the Galilee of the Gentiles. Meaning that you didn't have the Jewish religion with all these temples and everything. So when they came to the temples three times a year, for those three years, they were in all of those buildings. Wow, look at this. God is really here. Because we've got these temples dedicated to God. And His presence is supposed to be here. And you've got all these people in their robes and everything. And they were just so impressed by it. And they wanted to show Jesus. Because evidently Jesus wasn't too impressed by these buildings. He wasn't in awe by them. And so they, the disciples said, Well, look at these buildings, Jesus. Look at how how they represent God and how wonderful they are. It's exactly what happens today. I go to so-and-so church. You know, that's a, that's a big thing. Even for, you know, here in the Bible Belt in the South in Alabama here, most politicians, they'll say that. Today there's a there's a campaign going for governor. Isn't it governor that they're going for, yeah. I think? Yeah. And each one of those candidates are saying, I am a born-again Christian or something to that effect. They have it in form, but not in reality. Oh, I was going to say, um, they also, down here, um, we've noticed that a lot of churches have bumper stickers. Now, they want you to put on your car to say, I love my church, or I love, and you name, and the, it's the name of the church. It's not, I love Jesus. It's, you're saying you love a building, pretty much. Yeah, it's all about form. It's all about looking good. It has nothing to do with true worship of God by getting the sound doctrine in the inner man. And that's what Jesus saw in Matthew 24. And so Jesus responded to the disciples in Matthew 24, verse 2. Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Jesus says later in the same chapter, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And he says that all these temples, all these buildings here are going to be torn down. What does that tell you? That tells you that if God's word does not pass away, and those buildings are going to pass away, then those buildings do not represent God's word. They represent a fair show in the flesh that man has come up with. And that's the way it is today. When God comes and He destroys at, the, at His second coming and destroys the things of the Antichrist, primarily He's destroying the religion of Babylon, that mystery religion that started way back there under Nimrod in Genesis 10 in the Tower of Babel. And it's manifest today, primarily it's seen in the Catholic Church, but you can see it in all denominations as well. Whenever they follow formality, they follow tradition, and they do not follow what God's Word says. Nothing wrong with tradition. Even Paul's told Timothy to follow the traditions he had been taught. But the traditions that they have been taught was God's Word. If, it is, if the tradition is against God's Word, it's going to be torn down. And Jesus says that here. But why are you so in awe of these buildings, the disciples? He asked them, why are you in awe of these buildings? There's nothing good here. It's all going to be torn down because it's just man's fair show in the flesh. And so here we are on Sundays. We don't go to church. We don't dress up. And we're going to have Bible study later on. Of course, you know, two hours or so of Bible study and it will be uploaded to YouTube. But it's just done at home. Most people, most Christians, if I tell them, I don't go to church, they think I'm a heretic. They don't think I'm serving God. They think they're the ones serving God. But yet I have more sound doctrine and Christ living in me more than any of them. 
That's not a boasting of myself. It's a boasting of Christ. Paul says, We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. The substance is what God is after. Faith, believing the sound doctrine in his word. And so when these people, they have these churches that they go to and the formality of it, all that is is trying to take an earthen vessel and trying to make it look like God. And it doesn't work. The excellency of the power is of man when you do that. And you find out that it's not too excellent because it's man's power. But when you just do it in earthen vessels, when you don't have formality and putting on airs, then the result is Christ lives in you and the excellency of the power is of God. To the world it looks foolish, but to God it's the power of God unto salvation.